What's going on fellow cutters and cutters and welcome back to another video my name's Creek and I just want to make this video to show you guys the settings and setups that I use to stream to YouTube gaming using OBS multi-platform. Now I want to make it very clear this is, isn't exactly a tutorial for OBS. Um, I mean it kind of is but it's kind of not it's really just going over my settings and how I do some of the stuff I do. Um, I was going to make this into a tutorial, but it ended up being over an hour long. Well, not an hour long, over half an hour long, I should say. Um, so if you guys still want to see like a full-on OBS multi-platform tutorial, let me know, and I can I can get work to work on that. But um, if not, then this is just going to be my settings video, and uh, we'll go from there. Now, before we get started, uh, I do want to say that there are other programs that I use to stream other than just OBS. For example, I use VLC Media Player to load my music into the stream and to do a music playlist. I use Stream Warrior for sub notifications. So whenever something someone subscribes and their name pops up on screen, that's through a program called Stream Warrior. And whenever someone donates via PayPal, uh, I use Twitch Alerts to pop that up on the screen. Um, and then I also use some other programs here and there. I'll have the full list of programs in the description below. So if you want to know the exact list of programs that I use, check the description because it will be in there. But um, other than that, we're just going to be going over OBS and my settings in this video. So let's get started. All right. So this is pretty much what my screen looks like whenever I'm streaming to YouTube gaming. Um, but before we go into this and go into my scenes and my sources and all that stuff, let's first take a look at the settings that I use. So we're going to settings right here. Now, um, the general tab is pretty much nothing. Um, I do like the dark theme versus the, the, you know, the default theme just because it's easier on the eyes and it's a lot easier to see. Um, but there's really nothing as far as the general uh, settings go. So if we go to stream settings. Um, I stream the YouTube gaming, of course. Um, I use the primary YouTube ingest server. Now, sometimes the primary server does give me issues and I have to switch to the backup one, but um, I usually keep it on the primary server. Um, this is something you're going to have to test out for yourself because I do know some people that stream exclusively to the backup server and then some people that uh, stream exclusively to the primary server. So it's entirely, uh, you know, try it out, see how it works, and then choose the one that's best for you. Um, if you're like me, then they both work fine and I just use the primary and then of course the backup as a backup. Um, your stream key, I'll have a link in the description that will let you know where you can get your stream key from. But basically all you got to do is uh, take your stream key, paste it into this little section here and hit apply. And um, that's pretty much it for setting up uh, streaming to YouTube. Um, now one thing I note about the stream key is do not show anyone your stream key ever. If anyone gets their hands on your stream key, then they will be able to stream to your channel uh, without your permission from anywhere at any time. They don't even have to be logged into your account. So never give anyone your stream key. It is very, very, very important. But um, that is it for the stream tab. So let's move on to the output tab. All right, so for the output settings, um, I use the simple output mode. Now with OBS multi-platform, there's two output modes you can use, simple and advanced. They pretty much both do the exact same thing, except advanced gives you a couple more options. Like for example, if you don't want a constant bit rate, you can change it to a variable bit rate, which I don't recommend. Uh, it's generally a bad thing to have a variable bit rate, but um, you can do that with advanced if you want to. Um, you can also have other stuff like uh, various different audio channels and tracks. I only use one, um, which is why I only stick to simple mode. And everything's a lot more simple and streamlined, as you can see. But um, as far as video bitrate goes, I stream at 720p, 60fps. So I stream at 4000 bitrate, or Mbps. Now, how I've came to this is, and, and if you want to, you know, stream at 4000, what you're going to want to do is go to this website right here. It's called Speed Test. I'll have a link in the description. And what it does is you can measure the speed of your internet connection. Now, uh, you know, ping is 27, 30 Mbps download speed, 6 Mbps upload speed. Now, what you want to take note of is your upload speed here. Now, my upload speed is 6.17, uh, which is basically 6,000. If we go back to here, it equates to about 6,000. Now, you don't want to put that to 6,000 uh, for me. I, I wouldn't want to do that because if my upload speed fluctuated, then the stream would crap out. So what I like to do is keep my upload speed or my video bit rate at about 75 to 80% of my max upload speed, which is 6,000. And 4,000 is in that ball range, and it works quite well in terms of quality to you know performance ratio. So um, I use 4,000. Now, another site you can use here 
is if you go to Google's Live Encoder Settings page, this is in the YouTube handbook, I'll have a link to this in the description as well, um, we can look at 720p, 60fps, they recommend anything from 2000, 250 to 6000, and uh, 4000 is a little bit over you know, half of that, and uh, works quite well for me, so that's what I use, 4000 video bitrate. Obviously, like I said, don't just copy that because it probably won't work exactly the same for your connection. You'll have to go through this uh, playbook and go through speed test and you know see what your results are and go from there and kind of just play around with it and adjust it yourself. But um, for the audio bitrate, I use 128 because that is what YouTube uh, recommends. If we go down here, 128 uh, bitrate there. So that's what I use. Um, now recording, I don't record with OBS. I record with FRAP. So I don't do any of this. One thing I do use though is recording quality. I have this set to same as stream. So what this does is if I ever change my stream settings, I can actually record something uh, instead of streaming it and it'll use the exact same settings as my stream. So what, what that allows me to do is test the quality and settings of my stream in, for, in terms of quality you know, versus performance without actually having to stream. So instead of you know, having the whole world watch me test my OBS settings, I can just record you know, a quick gameplay video and um, see how everything goes from there. So that is something I would recommend doing with recording quality if you want to test it out without actually having to stream. But um, other than that, that is everything for the output section here. So let's move on to the audio. Uh, one thing I did forget to talk about here is the advanced encoder settings, and I do want to go over this. Um, if you uncheck this, or if you do check this, you have access to the encoder presets. And basically what these are is the higher up the list you go, the less CPU usage you're going to have. The further down you go, the more CPU usage you're going to have. And what this does is before your computer sends your stream out, your CPU encodes the, you know, your frames and stuff. Um, now, by default, it's at very fast, and if you uncheck it, it stays at very fast. Um, and that's what I use, is very fast. But um, if you were to drop it down further, so like, like say faster, for example, um, your CPU would actually be doing more encoding. So your stream will actually look better. You're going to have more CPU usage, but your stream will look better. And that goes, you know, further and further down the list. If you dropped it to, like, super fast, if you went up the list, then your CPU would be doing less encoding. So your stream's going to look a little bit worse, but your CPU usage will go down. So if you're hurting for your CPU usage, drop it down. If you have some room to spare and you want your stream to look better, you can move it up. Um, I just leave it at the default because um, I push my CPU as, as uh, much as possible already, so I don't need to mess around with any of that stuff. But um, I do believe that is it for output this time. All right, so moving on to the audio, um, here is all my audio settings. I use a 44.1 kilohertz sample rate. You can use 48. I use 41, though, because that's what YouTube recommends right here. Um, I don't have my microphone set up here. You can choose your microphone uh, if you want to in this spot. I don't, though, for a couple reasons, primarily so that my webcam and my microphone stays synced up. Um, so I actually have my microphone um, basically connected to my webcam, and I'll show you what I mean by that in, in a little bit. But um, I just use my default audio device here, uh, desktop audio device for desktop sound, like game sound and stuff, and everything else is the same. Uh, moving on to video though, I stream at 720p, uh, so that's my output scaled resolution. And let me explain these real quick. So your base resolution is the resolution of the game you're playing, okay? And the output scaled resolution is the resolution of your stream. So if I was playing Minecraft in a 1080p window, this would be 1920 by 1080. And then the output resolution, since I stream at 720p 60fps, would be 1280 by 720. Now I actually run Minecraft in a uh, 1280 by 720 window. Um, it just makes it easier for me to manage everything else. So I don't need to basically downscale anything. Um, so it does free up a little bit of CPU usage, uh, I, I think, maybe. But um, if you were playing Minecraft in full screen, you'd probably want to set this to something like you know 1080p or whatever your primary monitor's resolution is. But um, that's, that's how I do it, and it works quite well for me. Now, the downscale filter, obviously this doesn't affect me because I'm not downscaling. But um, if you were playing at 1080p and downscaling to 720, I'd recommend setting this to Langsos. Um, it's really, really good. And then um, FPS... I stream at 60, so 60 FPS is there. If you want to stream at 30, um, 30 is there as well, but I stream at 60, and that's pretty much it for my video. Now, as for hotkeys, I don't use any of these. Uh, I don't 
have any hotkeys set up. I just click on the scene, and I do that because I accidentally hit hotkeys a lot, um, and I'm scared I'm gonna accidentally like, hit a hotkey and not realize it. So I just leave this alone. Uh, but you can set up hotkeys here if you want. And advanced settings, I don't mess with any of this stuff because I don't want to break anything. So that is it for my settings. Now, all right, so now that you know what settings I use, let's take a look at some other stuff, like how I have my scenes set up and my sources and other stuff like that. So um, my first scene here in OBS is my welcome scene. And what's in here is my Minecraft welcome background. So basically this entire uh, image that you can see is just one giant background that I made in Photoshop. Um, I also have one for Black Ops 3 here. So whenever I'm streaming Black Ops 3, I just, you know, turn that on and it's good to go. Um, but that's that's that. Um, I have my YouTube chat here. Um, it's this right here. Now, I'll put a picture up on, on screen of what this actually looks like while a live stream is going. And if you're curious on how to do that, I'll have a link in the description. Blucifer actually has a tutorial on this. So go check out the link in the description if you want YouTube chat on your live stream. Um, and then, of course, I just have Stream Warrior and Twitch Alerts uh, loaded into the program here. Um, moving on, though, we have Minecraft. This is my Minecraft... Uh, Kind of like scene here. Now, if I had Minecraft running, you'd actually see it in the background. So let me actually get Minecraft running. One second. All right. So this is my Minecraft uh, screen here. This is what it looks like whenever I'm I'm streaming Minecraft and uh, I have you know Minecraft up and I'm playing the game. So what's going on here is down here at the bottom, I have my Minecraft uh, game scene here. So that's just that's my Minecraft source. Um, I have my social media up here, and this is just an image that I can you know drag around and resize. Um, I have my sub goal here. This is connected to Stream Warrior, which again I'm not gonna be going over in this video. But um, uh, if you're in, if you are interested in Stream Warrior, I'll have a link in the description to the website, and they do have tutorials up on there. Um, I have my recent donator and my top donator here, and these are connected to Twitch alerts. Um, again, I'll have a link to their website in the description, and you can learn about that there. Um, I have my face cam here. And um, I'll go over how my face cam is set up uh, momentarily. And then, of course, I just have stream order and Twitch alerts. So that way, if someone, you know, subscribes or someone, uh, you know, donates, it'll pop up on this scene. Um, I have my Black Ops 3 game scene here, which is pretty much the exact same, except I have an Elgato loaded in instead of my, um, instead of my, uh, my Minecraft there. So that is Black Ops 3, the exact same as Minecraft, except, you know, instead of Minecraft, Elgato. Um, here's my BRB scene, which is the exact same as my welcome scene, except, you know, obviously it says BRB. And same thing for my ending scene. Um, and then for the horse dance, here's the horse dance here. And whoa, <laughs> big creek. Um, the horse dance here, I have a barn image. So this is an image of a barn in the background. Um, I have my face cam here, which I'll turn my face cam off so that you can see the actual uh, screen here. Um, so here's the barn. And then on top of the barn, I have this overlay. Um, so this is the overlay that I made in Photoshop. Um, and then I have Stream Warrior and Twitch Alerts here. So that way if someone donates or subscribes while I'm doing the horse dance, that will pop up uh, there as well. So that is that. Um, let's go to the Creek Raid. So this is the Creek Raid scene. And what this is, is I just have a, a gray background there. Um, as you can see, I have the YouTube chat loaded up there. Um, I have my giant creek raid text up there at the top um a how to participate and instructions section and these are just you know texts that i just you know typed in the obs and um works quite well i have my face cam and then stream warrior and twitch alerts so that's my scenes now let's go into how i have my face cam and my green screen setup because i get asked about that quite a bit all right, so for my face cam, um, what I have here is if I go into the properties of it, you can see that I'm using a C920 webcam here, and everything here is the default. It's the exact same default settings that OBS uses. Um, the only difference being that I use a custom audio device, and I load my microphone into my face cam. So I have my microphone selected here, my Blue Yeti selected with the face cam. And what this does is you can actually see, here's my desktop audio, here's my game, my music, and then here's my voice. And what this does is it prevents the microphone from getting out of sync with the webcam. So if you were to select your audio or your microphone in here, then your microphone has a chance of getting out of sync with your webcam, which we don't want, obviously. So if you load your web or your microphone in with your webcam, it has a, it's basically never gotten out of sync for me um, ever since I've done this. So I'd highly recommend doing this. 
Um, but as for my green screen and stuff, uh, once you have your face cam set up and loaded, if you go to the filters of it, um, I have a couple filters. First off, I have a video delay here, and if I take this on, you can see that, whoa, I'm talking, but it has a little bit of a delay. And what this does is whenever I'm streaming uh, my Xbox, the Elgato has like a uh, 700 millisecond delay. That's what I've calculated it to be. Um, and so if I set my webcam to have a video delay, since my microphone is loaded into my webcam, my face cam and microphone automatically gets delayed to the exact same settings as my Elgato. So that way everything stays in sync. Um, if I'm just playing Minecraft, I don't need this because Minecraft doesn't have a delay on it. Um, so I just leave this uh, unchecked. But if I'm playing Xbox, I check this and we get the delay going on. Um, as far as the effects, I use two effects. The first is a crop. And what this is, is I just crop everything out but me. So that way you're not seeing anything past the green screen. You're not seeing anything you know, over there. Um, you're just seeing me and the green screen. And that works quite well. Um, and then for the, the big... The big one, the green screen, this is what it looks like without the green screen. You can see the, the green screen way back there. Um, I actually have it on my wall. I know a lot of people put it up right behind them. I don't do that because I like to have room to do the horse dance. Um, but how I have this set up is I just went into custom color type. I selected a, you know, I just picked a screen color, chose my green screen, and um, went from there. And then once I have the color selected, I just played around with the similarity settings. So if I were to turn this on and play around the similarity, as you can see, the green screen is 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 gone. But if I ramp it up, whoa, I'm going bye bye. Ah, whoa, that is actually pretty funny. <laughs> Suddenly a dead mouse hat. Oh, that's funny. And if I keep going, it's gone. So what you have to do is, depending on the lighting and everything in your room, you're gonna want to set this to an appropriate level so that the green screen is gone, but you're not gone as well. Um, and for me, I found that number to be uh, to be 40, and that what, that's what works for me. So that's what I use. Um, you can also play around with smoothness and key color spill reduction, but I don't use any of that stuff uh, because I don't need to, um, as well as contrast and brightness uh, as well down here. But um, that is pretty much that for my face cam, and I actually believe that's pretty much it. That is, that is pretty much all my settings and my face cam and how I have everything set up. So, um, I do believe that is the end. So that's going to be it for this video. Hopefully it helped you guys out and, uh, you now know what settings and, um, how I have everything set up to stream on OBS. Again, if you want to learn about all the other programs I use, like Stream Warrior, Twitch Alerts, all those links will be in the description. Um, as well as, you know, how to get the YouTube chat up on screen and all of that awesome stuff. So thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next video or stream. Bye guys. Bye. Honey.